high school cooking. Go ahead. Mama don't want no peace, no rice, no coconut oil. Mama don't want no peas, no rice, no coconut oil. All she wants is handy brandy all the time. Oh, yeah. Now just sing the other one now. What? <coughs> About the time. Time marches on. Time marches on. The young get old and the cold get cold. Time marches on. <laughs> okay. Hey, everybody. Hey everyone, uh, sorry for taking so long to put the next video out, but um, I've been trying to gather some data, some photos, what I have in front of me is, I hope, organized but chaotic, none the least, a bunch of photos that I'm going to try and go through today to introduce you to my dad okay? and let you know I'll give you a background of what he was, who he was. Um, so, yeah. Well, first off, he's he's a magnificent artist. You know, I think his uh, ambition in life was to become an artist, from what I understand from his stories. And, um, he, I think the story goes uh, he his parents sent him to to go visit an artist and see the kind of lifestyle an artist lives uh, and he saw the mess and uh, chaos and disorganization everywhere I don't remember who it was he went to see and then he said the hell with this right <laughs> I think that's a that's the a point where he decided to become a lawyer um, I hope I got the story right. But yeah, he was always good at art. It was instilled in him. I guess he was born with it. His father was talented as well, from what I understand. Um, he won numerous um, art sculpting and drawing competitions um, in school uh, up against some of the better I mean, some of the really renowned Bahamian artists. I mean, he even beat Ralph Harris in, I think, was it sculpting or drawing? Anyway, one of the two. And, yeah, he was real talented. Um, this, yeah, this is yearbook graduation year, year 1960. And, the cover was designed by him. You could see, I don't know if you could see, the name Nicholas John Zervos. So you could see he's very talented in drawing as well. Painting, this painting was done by him. This is a painting of a balcony house, which is a tourist attraction. It's like one of the oldest houses in Nassau. Um, it's quite a few paintings he's done. I'll probably put some up uh, uh, digitally. I don't have much here on the table. Um, I have this one. This one here. Uh, this is Columbus ships. This is the Santa Marina, the Nina, and the Pinta. This is a painting he did in 1999. This one is hanging in my sister's house. So, yeah, he was really good. So yeah, he put that behind him. Put the art behind him as a career. And pursued law. I think that's what his parents wanted him to do initially, but he was resistant. He was rebelling, you know. So after he saw the lifestyle of the artist, he just said, "Hey, the heck with it. That's that's too long." <laughs> I guess they they had a better lifestyle. Um, so my daddy is he's born Bahamian, Greek descent. His parents migrated here from Kalimnos, Greece. 
They were both born in Greece. Um, Daddy was born here. And I say that to say, he was an immigrant son. <laughs> son of two immigrants. His parents uh, migrated here from Kalimnos, Greece. I think it was during the Second World War. They migrated here to get away from the war. And it's supposed to be like America, but not quite America, say that. He was the first Bahamian of Greek descent to pass the Bahamian bar examination. So he was very proud of that. Um, yeah, I have photos which I'll have to post up uh, digitally. I don't have them here on the table in this chaotic craziness. <laughs> but I'll put some up for you all to see of him. Um, photos of him being called to the bar. Um, not only was he a lawyer, he was certified scuba diver. He was certified in Paddy and Nawi. I don't know the difference, but <laughs> he always said he's certified in both Paddy and Nawi. Um, a funny story about that is when he was going to do his certification, the final test for the certification um, involved him being dropped off I can't remember how many miles offshore into the ocean and he had to swim from there to shore and the night before he did that was Jaws was released so him and a bunch of his friends went and watched Jaws <laughs> so he always laughed about um, the irony of it, you know, having to watch, watching Jaws the night before he's going to be dropped in the middle of the ocean <laughs> somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he said he was terrified. He was terrified, but, you know, he made it up. And I think that's where I, uh, I got that from him, I think, making it up. And, you know, he always used to like to say, anything worth doing, it's worth doing well. And, you know, he did everything he did, he did exceptionally well. Um, he was a black belt in karate, first degree black belt. He was a master in theology. Uh, he loved photography. He definitely loved fishing and hunting. Um, and he just loved being on the water pretty much, mostly he loved being on the water. He built a few boats um, in his younger years. Um, I think he built two. One was a flat bottom boat. I don't know if he ever named that one. And the one he was most proud of was uh, the carousel, which he named, which he built. His first real boat, he said, his first real boat. Um, don't know what it looked like, I never saw it. Um, that's what I named my Grady White after, the carousel. Uh, but I would imagine it looked something like the boat we built together. Um, I was looking for some good photos of it. They were all over the place. I took pictures of everything, but when you want them, you can't find them. So this was really the only one I could find of the boat me and him built I think this was in 85 or 86 there's a 16 foot wooden hull um, with a V bottom so I'd imagine the carousel looked something like this uh, he said it had a bow bows a piece of wood sticking off the bow. Um, so maybe if I had to duplicate this one, it looked like this. And the front cabin. 
benches and I had a piece of wood sticking out the bow I don't know, I, I'm pretty sure he said it <laughs> I'm not sure if I had a mask um, but, and he had a, a 40 horsepower on that which is what is on this as well he had a 40 horsepower Johnson this one had a 40 horsepower Evan Rood it's just the same thing Um, we built it out of 1x4s, 1x4s was the, the structure of the hull, 2x12s, um, pressure treated um, pine and we sh sheeted it with half inch plywood and we put a layer of fiberglass on the bottom up to the waterline, that's it. Everything else was just painted with house enamel paint. So that was the first boat we built together. As you can see, he was very talented, very good with his hands. Let's see if I can get a digital image of this up as well. And yeah, that's what we towed it with. An old Toyota Corolla hatchback. <laughs> Alright. Uh, here's another view of it. Um, I don't know if you could see it back there on the trailer. That's some mud and fish we caught during our, our mud and fish season. This is in 86. So, yeah, it was in 86. You could see it has some weather on it, so I think we built this in 85. Here's another photo of us. You could see the 40 horse. That's some nice, two nice lobsters we got one day out diving. That's all the photos I could find of that particular boat. Um, I'm sure they're somewhere, but I just can't put my hands on them. Um, the next boat after that was this one. This was a 23 foot glass tech hull that's my baby sister there <laughs> he always liked to have someone in the photo when he was taking photos of the boat <laughs> right this one we did a good amount of work too we stripped it out this had inboard motor and what we did is we actually what he did I was just helpful what he did he cut the stern Right there. I don't know if you could see it. Filled in the hole, fiberglassed it up where the stern drive was coming through and cut the stern, built the splash rail, and all that good stuff. Um, here's the inside view of it. Here's a picture of it. And it's first in the water. But I'll probably try to change these, put digital snaps of these on instead of me holding these like this. That's one of our catches. Nice catch. Another one. It's my Uncle Tony. It's my Uncle Tony. He loved his straw hat, boy. Daddy loved his straw hat. Here's another boat, the new boat catch. That would have been in the wooden boat. So, oh, this is a, our first father ass boat ever in me or my daddy's life yeah it was a fixed upper we fixed the upper uh, she had 270 horsepower on the back of it she was in those speeds though but we had a lot of fun in that good memories um, 
And then after that was we saw that that had some structural issues. Uh, We sold that and we bought the Bertram, um, which is where we are now. Bertram, Bertram Photos. Let's get the Bertram Photos here. Okay. I know we got more of these too, but this is the soul of Greece. This is when she first went in the water. Brand new. And spanking new. I can tell because uh, the tent isn't on the glass yet. Here's another photo. That's her in the yard on the trailer. Um, this is probably when we pulled up to get the stringer fixed. Because um, you could see the tent tent is on the glass now so when you brought up you know you freshen up the bottom paint the pulpit is off I think we could took that off to recondition that as well before we put her in it put her back in the water but yeah that's the that's how she looked in her glory days that's a cooler full of fish on the bridge room Nice catch, huh? Any snappers, huh? That's all. Uh, that's my whole family. All my sisters and their family. I'm sitting on the back of the porch room. Yes. Uh, look at the spread, you know. That's my mom. I guess we were having a picnic on the beach that day. It's a nice red snapper. He used to do deep sea fishing a lot. That's Bethel. He's a policeman. Um, he's passed away now as well. Very good friend of ours. That's me impressing my wife, you know. I don't think we were married yet, but there it is. Me being a big capitano. My Uncle Tony there again. <laughs> Photo bombing. <laughs> yeah, it's another action photo. It's my sister, husband, and my baby sister. Right there. Same one as this, Mary. So, yeah, good times, good times. Another photo in the Bertram. Good times. And well, this was the last time. She saw the water. She sunk mysteriously. Don't know exactly what happened. A lot of speculation, but we don't know exactly what happened. All we know is both bilge pumps failed. She took on water, and that's what happened. Here's another view. Completely submerged. I think this is the same thing. And here's another one. It's a different view. Daddy took all these pictures, I think for insurance purposes. That's a little bit about my daddy and who she was and uh, the history, our boat history together. Um, since then, since the Bertram. Um, because of financial reasons, we were, we were unable to um, really bring it back to proper working condition. Partly because our regular mechanic, his name is Ricky, 
hardly moved away. And we didn't have anyone to take care of the engines properly. So we got someone else based on someone's recommendation. But, um, he didn't do us well at all. So the engines just deteriorated to a point where it was too expensive to even fix them anymore. And we ended up just selling them all for parts in hopes that we would one day be able to afford new engines. But as the years went by, the hull deteriorated and the work became more and more and became more and more overwhelming. Just the overall scope of work and the amount of money it would cost to do to pay someone to do it. It just wasn't in our budget. <coughs> So many years passed by and I bought a 17 foot formula, it was a fixer upper as well, I got it for a good price, got the hull in the trailer, uh, the floor and the stringers on that needed to be replaced, so I hired someone to do it, because I didn't know what to do, I was totally clueless. When they fixed the Bertram stringer, I didn't pay attention. I was young, so I really didn't know I was involved in getting it done. But when they were doing the, my little formula, I, I'd watch them. I didn't watch them work, because I was at work, but I'd watch their progress when I got home. And I saw what they did, and how they did it. And I said, you know, hey, if I have to do this again, I think I could do this myself, you know, because it's expensive. They charged me like five and a half thousand dollars just to change two stringers and put on a new floor. Um, so yeah, that's expensive. Um, so yeah, from then I say, you know, I, I think I could do this. Uh, so 17 foot formula, I don't have any physical photos to show you. This is all in the digital age now, so I'll post some of them up yeah, when I'm editing the video. And then we all grew that one. Boys grew up, you know, they're not babies anymore. They both six foot. And the boat was filling up, you know, with space. We didn't have space for everybody. Comfortable space. So we decided to upgrade to the Grady White. Um, again, that's a, that was a fixer upper. Um, it needed some work. The back half of the floor was soft. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, the stringers checked out okay. So I took that project upon myself to do. So that was the first real fiberglass job, repair job I've ever done. And what gave me the courage to do it as well is actually um, from watching Boatworks Today, uh, the guy's name Andy, I watched a lot of his videos. He helped me a lot in my confidence in doing fiberglass work. And he taught me a lot and I saw him replace a flaw in one of the boats in one of his videos and, and I said, hey, I could do it. Yeah, so I did it. I followed his um, instructions. You know, it wasn't perfect, but I made it happen. I got it done. Um, all this time, you know, I was trying to sell the formula to get some money to pay for the new engine for the Grady White. And in the meantime, I was fixing the floor, and during this time, Daddy was deteriorating. And I eventually sold the boat. I sold the boat. I closed the deal on December 4th, uh, around 9.30, 10 a.m. I sold the boat. And 
December 4th, around 4 p.m. Daddy passed. <clears throat> so Daddy never had a chance to go out the carousel with us. <clears throat> He didn't even know I was gonna name it the carousel. I was gonna surprise him, but I didn't get the chance. Yeah, so Andy gave me a lot of confidence. Another uh, YouTube series I watched that gave me some good ideas is uh, Say a Life. It's because of him, I use a kiwi grip on the floor of the carousel and I put the name of the carousel on the floor in the kiwi grip, which I'll put a photo up here so you can see that as well. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, that's good enough for this video. I think this video is running off, gonna be kind of long, so I'll cut it off here. I think I'll, from now on, I'll implement uh, Daddy's photo of the day in each video. And as I find new interesting photos of boats or fishing trips, I'll include them in these videos as well. Just for fun. <laughs> I don't see why not. Well, it's good talking to you. Sorry about taking so long to bring a video on but it's been hectic it's Christmas season um, so a lot is going on but I'm happy to give this story to you share this story with you and yeah, so much photos here I still haven't shown so I guess we'll integrate them I'll integrate them in the other videos as we progress with the boat. I think we'll end this here. Thanks for watching. That's all. Mama don't want no peace, no rice, no coconut oil. Mama don't want no peace, no rice, no coconut oil. All she wants is handy brandy all the time. Oh yeah, now to sing the other one now. <laughs> About the time. Time marches on, time marches on. The young get old and the gold get cold. Time marches on. <laughs>